socioeconomic rights and accountability project set up has dragged the federal government and cross River State Governor Ben Ayade to echo his court of justice in Abuja over the prolonged arbitrary detention, unfair persecution, and persecution and sham of trial of journalist Agba Jalingo. Jalingo, who is the publisher of the Cross River Watch, was arrested on August 22nd over a report alleging that Ayade diverted 500 million naira belonging to the state. In a suit filed last week at ECOWAS court, Serap is arguing that the sole objective of the government of Nigeria and the Cross River State government of, of Governor Ben Ayade is to perpetually keep Agba Jalingo in arbitrary detention and to silence him simply for expressing critical views and carrying out his legitimate job as journalist. Similarly, Ayola Babalola, a student activist and young journalist, was arrested on Friday, January 24, 2020. He was charged to court for allegedly publishing certain articles in a campus newspaper called Gaposa Trumpet, which, which he served as editor. The said article deemed critical of President Buhari, all progressive Congress leader Bola Metinubu, and the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission also led to the dismissal of a lecturer of the Gateway Polytechnic who served as a producer of the campus newspaper. And now we're joined by phone by the cancer to Ayola Babala in Nebe Efiong. Good morning to you, Nebe, and thank you for joining us. Good morning. Good morning. Please, can you update us with the latest development as regard the detention and trial of the student activist, Ayola Babalola? The matter is in court. He was arrested by the State Security Service on what appears to be Trump up charges instigated by both officials of uh, Gateway Polytechnic and some external forces. So he was arraigned in court, uh, was able to take him on bail, having been granted bail by the court. So we've been to court uh, three times since the matter, the charge was filed. They haven't been able to proceed so far. They haven't been able to call a single witness. They are basically not ready to proceed with the case. But interestingly, at the last adjourned date, when we were in court, the Honorable Attorney General of Ogun State indicated his interest to take over the prosecution of the matter from the SSS, okay. which they did. Yeah. Oh, I'm, so I'm going to ask you, um, Inyebe, let me ask you this. Uh, can, can you shed light on why he was arrested and his ordeal so far? Can you shed more light on why he was arrested, please? Well, the charges in court do not entirely tally with the, what we understand to be the reasons for his arrest. He was arrested and interrogated over publication that we made in a campus newspaper. That is a newspaper within the Gateway Polytechnic. It was interrogated by the SSS in respect of those publications. I'm also aware that the Polytechnic itself has taken several actions in connection with those publications. But in court, they are claiming that they are trying him over a post they claim he made on Facebook, calling for boycott of protest over the death of a student at the Polytechnic Clinic on account of lack of proper medical attention. But for us, that is just a smoke screen. Because the reason for his arrest are clear and it relates to as I have said, certain publications the claim were made against the national leader of the APC, Bola Metunubu, President Buhari, and also publications relating to Mr. Morele Shuwere and a student activist Femi Adeye. Those are the issues they interrogated him on. Those are the issues captured in the statement at the SSS. 
at no time throughout this period of in the custody with the SSS, did they ask him any questions about any post on Facebook? Okay. That is why I'm saying that the so-called charges in court are not in the smoke screen. Now, now tell me, how, how does this development infringe on press freedom and rights to freedom of speech as enshrined in the Constitution? It is a further question of press freedom in the country. Unfortunately, the current regime has consistently, since it's coming into existence, attacked journalists, reporters, and media houses. So Ayobaba Lola's case is consistent with the pattern that we have seen over the last five years. And for me, that is very unfortunate. But the good news is that despite this regime of repression, we in the human rights community are determined not only to challenge the impunity of the regime, but also see to it that their shenanigans do not stand in court. All right, now, now let's go back to the, gate, the case of um, Agba Jalingo. Sarah has dragged the federal government and Cross River State government to ECOWAS court. What, what's your thought on this? Well, uh, what Sarah has done is an act of advocacy. I don't want to dwell on the legal niceties of that, whether the ECOWAS court can exercise jurisdiction over a matter that is being litigated in the courts of a state party, that is within a court of a country that is a state party to the ECOWAS court treaty. The point I am making is that the Cross River State Government and the governor in particular, in connivance with the Federal Ministry of Justice and the Nigerian police, have continued to violate the rights of Albert Jalingo in the guise of prosecution. The entire case against him is founded on fiction. It is that's no legal basis as far as I'm concerned. When a citizen is being charged for terrorism on account of what the governor claims to be publication on a website, it begs the question whether terrorism is now so ridiculous that it has totally lost meaning under this regime. So as far as I'm concerned, I agree with Sirab on the point that there is no legitimate prosecution going on against Abadi Alingo in Gross River State. And I also find it particularly painful that despite the governor coming out publicly to admit that he lied against Abadi Alingo on the reason for his arrest, Mr. Jalingo is still in custody. And while he was in custody, he lost his brother, to the cold hands of death. So this is painful, this is unfortunate, and I hope that before long, this charade that is going on, the charade that is going on in Cold River State, will be brought to an end. Human rights lawyer, Inebe F. Young, thank you very much for joining us and for your contribution. Thank you.